Number 23, okay. Continuing on. Number 23 says, a survey is being conducted to determine which type of television program people watch. Which survey and location combination would likely contain the most bias? And uh, bias just means that it favors one side over the other, that it's an unfair survey. So which survey seemed the most unfair between these four choices? All four choices contain some sort of bias, uh, but the survey and location with the most bias would be would be choice number one. Uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that it's uh, being served in a sporting goods store. So usually, normally, people that go to sporting goods stores are into sports. The uh, uh, the survey of the answers they will give on the survey most likely would be a preference for watching sports uh, programs. Uh, another bias might is the number of people that's getting surveyed. It's only ten. Ten compared to the other ones. Ten is a low amount of people and any uh, any answer given by one or two people can definitely change the direction of the survey okay so uh, out of these four choices choice one would be the most biased question 24 the length of the rectangular room is seven times I'm uh, I'm sorry sorry seven less than three times the width W of the room. Which expression represents the area of the room? So, I'm going to picture a rectangular room here, over here. And uh, the statement states that the length, and let's just call this length on the bottom, this width, okay? All right, the length is seven less than three times the width. So, length is seven times less. So, it's minus seven from three times the width. Okay, so another instead of length, I'm gonna cross out the length. It'll just be three w minus seven, and the width is on the side. Right? And just the length uh, to get the area of the room. I need to multiply these two. Right, area is length times width. So length is three w minus seven, and my width is w. So and we're just gonna use a distributive property over here, and that is. W times 3W, that's 3W squared, and W times negative 7, which is minus 7W, right? And that is how you represent the area of the room. This is choice 4, choice 4. Okay, on to the next one, number 25. Number 25 shows a function here, y equals x divided by x squared minus 9. And they're looking for what makes it undefined. What is x that makes undefined? Okay, if you don't remember what undefined means, it just means you cannot solve or get a value for it. Okay. So when does this happen with fractions? Well, this happens when there's a 0 in the denominator, for example. If you have 2 over 0, that's undefined. You put in a calculator, it's going to give you an error. You can't solve for that. It's undefined. If you have 100 divided by 0, that's undefined. If you have x, y, z divided by 0, that's undefined. Right? If you have a smiley face divided by 0, that's undefined. Okay? So anything with 0 on the bottom is undefined. Now we have x squared minus 9 on the bottom. If I want to find out what makes it undefined, you can put x squared minus 9 and set it equal to zero, all right? But what about that x on the top? I don't care about the x on the top. It has nothing to do with it, right? Because you can see the two here, the hundred, the x, y, z, and the smiley face. It doesn't play a factor in this question. All that matters is that zero on the bottom. You want to get that zero, okay? So set the denominator equal to zero, and let's solve it out. Well, this is the difference of two perfect squares, x squared minus nine. So what you can do is actually factor this out, difference of two perfect squares, that's x plus 3, x minus 3, All right? and we solve it for x, so x plus 3 equals 0, and for one solution, x equals negative 3, and the other one is x equals the opposite of negative 3, positive 3, so these are your two solutions over here, and if you look at the choices, 
three and negative three is choice two. Uh, also another way of doing it, if you don't remember factoring, is look at the choices, plug those numbers in. Which choice will make or have will give you a zero as the denominator? Okay, number 26. Which equation represents a line that is parallel to the line y equals 3 minus 2x? So, uh, what parallel means is they have the same slope. So, let's take a look at the original equation here. Y. Right, get my pen working. Y equals 3 minus 2x. Well, what is the slope? The slope is a number in front of x. Okay, so the slope in this case would be negative 2. Okay, so slope equals negative 2. Alright, now take a look at the choices over here. Which choice also have a slope of negative 2? Okay. Now this is the hard part. Alright, because all the choices, or most of them, are not in standard form. Okay? Well, let's take a look at the questions, I mean, the, the choices with standard form first, and that's choice three and four. Let's take a look at choice three. Does the number in front of x have a negative two? This is negative four, so that's no good. Okay, what about choice four? Well, in front of x is a four, so that's not negative two. That can't be it. Right, now there's two of them. Two of them left. Choice one, let's put in standard form first. 4x plus 2y equals 5. I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 4x on both sides. All right, and get y by itself. So you have 2y equals negative 4x plus 5. Now you're going to divide by 2. Divide by 2. And negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2x plus 5 over 2. And this is equal to y. Oh, guess what? The first choice one just happens to have negative 2 as their slope, the number in front of x. So therefore, this would be our answer because they have the same negative 2 as a slope. Okay. And if I were to work out choice 2, um, it's also not going to have the same slope. Oh, but I'm not going to waste time in this video showing you that. But choice 1 is the correct answer. So select choice one. Okay, 27 is a tricky one. It's a scientific notation question. All right, let's multiply this out. And if you multiply it out with a calculator, let's say over here we have a calculator. Right. Let's just turn this on. Type in 8.4 times 4.2. Uh, you actually get 35, right? You'll get 35.28. So over here, 35.28, right? And if you multiply the 10 to the 8th power uh, times 10 to the 3rd power, you add the exponents, so it's actually 10 to the 11th power. Okay, so if you look at these different choices, automatically choice 3, you would guess the an is the answer, but it's actually not, because scientific notation, they're not allowed to have two digits, right, two digits in front of decimal. Right, what you need to do is only have one digit, so you need to actually move this decimal over one, so it's 3.5 to 8 times 10 to the, well if you move decimal forward one, increase the exponent by one also, so the 11 here becomes a 12, and that will be your answer, 3.528 times 10 to the 12, Cho choice 4, choice 4. Number 28 is a probability question. We have a spinner it's divided into eight equal sections or sectors, and pretty much uh, Keisha wins each time it lands an orange. If she spins it uh, twice or two times, what is the chances that she wins on both spin? 
Okay, so the probability of uh, Keisha winning on the first spin uh, is uh, count how many oranges there are. There's one orange out of eight. The chance of her winning the first spin is one out of eight. All right? Win in the first spin. Right, first win. The second spin, the chance of her winning or getting an orange on the second spin is also one out of eight. And if she wants to win both t uh, times, uh, you just need to multiply these two fractions, one eighth times one eighth, and that is one out of 64. That's her chance of winning twice in a row. Choice one. All right, number 29, we're almost finished here with part one. Uh, 29, we have uh, this question over here. Let me just uh, put it down the same screen first. So give me a few seconds. Okay, 29, a movie deal that records the number of uh, tickets sold daily for a popular movie during the month of June. The Box and Whisker shows, uh, shown below represents the data for the number of tickets sold in hundreds. Okay, so what conclusion can you make from this plot? Okay, choice one, the second quartile is 600. So the second quartile is over here. Right. Let me get my ink pen here working again. Okay, so second quartile is over here. And that is not 600, that's uh, 400. So it's not choice one. Uh, number two, the mean of the attendance is 400. Mean, well, box and whisker tells you median. It doesn't really, t doesn't talk about mean. So that can't be it. Number three, the range of the attendance is 300 to 600. Range means lowest to highest, okay? or minimum to maximum. And this is from actually 100 through 900, so it's not choice three. I mean, by process of elimination, it has to be choice four, but let's take a look. 25% of the attendance is between 300 and 400. Well, between 300 and 400, this area over here, that is one quartile. And that is from first quartile to second quartile. And one quartile is actually 25%. And it is between 300 and 400. Okay? And that's why this answer would be true and correct. Choice four. And the last and final question for part one is which graph here represents a function? Uh, to figure out which one represents a function, we do something called a vertical line test. And that is drawing vertical lines through the graph over here. If any of these lines touches two points on the graph, for example, this one it touches one point here and one point here. On the parabola, each one of these lines touches two or more points, then it's not a function, not f. Okay, what about this one, choice three? Yes, a single line does touch two points or more, so it's not function. And choice four. Choice four. Oh yes, each line only touch one and only one point. When that happens, that means it's a function, right? Okay, because the line, each vertical line only touches one and only one point. And that's the definition, or visually, how you can see it's a function. Choice two is not it, because on these vertical lines, on actually this vertical line, it touches millions of points. Every single point touches on line, so that is not f. Ooh, that's not function. All right, there you have it. Uh, choice four is the answer, and we completed part one. Take a look at the next video for part two.